Hey, this is Ken at Capital Vintage Tutoring. It's my job to get you past these crazies at end. So I'm helping to get past the Series 7 today. And I have three questions that are highly, highly testable that are options related, kind of out there questions, not the normal break even, max gain, max loss, kind of out there questions. And I'm going to show you how to process them because always remember it, my epiphany here about 20 years ago was the test is easy. Not, not that it's actually easy, but even the hard questions, if you break them down, you can figure out what they do. So let's get into it. So as always, what you do is when you see the question, hit pause, wait, I'll wait for you. And then you try to figure it out. And then you see if you figure it out the same way as me. So guess what, hit? Pause. Oh, oh. Okay, so now, funny, right? So now, let's get, let's read it first. Always remember, you want to read it, look at the choices, then go back and figure out what they'll have. As of October month end, a customer's account has the following positions. Long 200 shares of XYZ, common. Long one April 20 call, long two April 20 puts. Fine, that's the end of the month, end of the quarter. Now, into the next day, on November 1st, is that All Souls Day? Maybe. Okay, so now, All Saints Day? I don't know. The customer enters the following order. Sell 200 XYZ at the market, buy an April 20 call. Okay, the position following execution of the trades above will be a what? A covered right, a straddle, a combination, or a spread. Those are our four choices. So let's get into what we're doing now. So we start as we have, we're long, we got to work this through. They look hard, they're not hard. you long 200 shares of XYZ, doesn't matter the fucking price, right? So then we're long one call and we're long two puts. The next day we sell 200 at the market. Okay, so that means our position in the, the stock is gone, baby, gone. Gone, baby, gone. Now, so now we're left with long one call and long two puts. And then what do we do? Okay, so let's we this is gone, right? Because we sold it. And we bought another call. Well, we're long one call and long two puts. So if we buy another call, then really we are just where am I? We're now long two calls and long two puts. Now let's go down and see what we got. Okay, it's not a covered right, because that would be what? That'd be buy stock, sell a call. That's not there. Now, if we did other things, it would. A straddle, okay, a combination. Well, we know a combination is like a straddle, but a weird one, a mean straddle. It's, it's going to be different strikes for different months, right? So that's not there. It's the same same month, same strike. So it's not a combination. Remember, don't go for the weird. Whenever you see something like this, think straddle, not, not combo first, you know. Now, and don't think ratio, a butterfly, don't go there. Now, a spread is buy a call, sell a call, or buy a put, sell a put. That doesn't work. It's buy a call, buy a put. So it's got to be un straddle. A strudel straddle. Okay, good. That's it. That's all it is. It's not that hard. It looks harder than it is. It's just not that hard because if you break this shit down. Okay, on to number two. Here we go. XYZ. Remember, press pause. I'll wait for you. Okay, we're back. XYZ stock is trading at 53.50. A customer has no position in the stock. Everything matters. Believes the market price will rise Moderately, not a lot. The customer's best option strategy is to, okay. So first of all, we know it's going up, so we have to find bullish things. So let's go for the bullish things first. We're going to mark, knock in and out. So here we go. Start at the bottom, buy a 50, call 350. Always remember the little trick on spreads, because it looks like they're all spreads. Call, 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 right? Call, call, put, put, call, call, put, put. Okay, so these are all spreads. So the rule here, the trick here is to find out bull or bear super quick is you find the lower strike price. If you bought it, you're bullish. If you sold it, you're bearish. I'll say that again. does not matter whether it's a call spread or put spread. If you buy the lower strike, you're bullish. If you don't, you're bearish. There you go. does not matter what kind. So 50 is a low one when we bought it, so that could be a possible. That's a maybe. Um, buy a 50 put, sell it. Oh, that's another maybe, okay? Because remember, we want to rise moderately, so we're looking for bulls. Then buy a 55 call. Oh, so the lower one is a bearish so that's that's a sell so we're out and then buy a 55 put sell a 50 put again the lower ones are sell so the bottom two are out so now we have to choose between the two of them and those bullish so that kind of sucks but let's go through have a little fun so this is a call spread whenever you have a spread you net out the premiums so the premium here is a dollar fifty and that would be a debit okay and down here Great. Oh, that's not helping us either. That's a dollar fifty. Uh oh. That's but that's a credit. So okay. So we're here. I still don't know what to do. Crap. There. But there, I, I thought something would trick out. So let's try another round. So let's find the break evens. Maybe that'll be the next thing. So in the call spread, 
It's 55 on the upside, 50 on the bottom. And since it's a call spread to add to the lower, right? Call spread to add to the lower. So my break even, 50 plus $1.50 is 51.50. I like that. That works. I'm with you. I'm hearing you. And I'm bullish. I like it. I like it. We're going. Boom. Now let's do the other one. 55 and 50. Boy, that's they're not making it easy here, are we? Now, 55 and 50. Okay, and I'm bullish, but it's a put spread I subtract from the top. Remember, call up, put down, baby. Call spread you add to the bottom. Put spread you subtract from the top no matter what. So 55 minus dollar fifty. I think I know where we're going here. 53.50. Right? Now, don't say I had nine cents into that. Make it harder. And I am bullish. We know that. So anything above 53.50 is a gain. And on this one, anything above 51.50 is a gain. So we're already the stocks are already at 53.50 and it goes up. So if it goes up, let's go with a couple of things. One, I'm already starting it behind the April here. This one, if the stock's at 53.50, I'm already $2, baby. I already got a profit of $2. So if it goes up, I make more. And look, the max gain here is 350. And if I start here, I'm already, like, think about this. If the stock's trading at 53.50, which is where it is, right? Well, the stock's, if it's here, if it doesn't move at all, you make nothing. You already have $2 on this one because it's $2 higher and we're bullish. But if it goes up above, up above, okay, now, I can make from fifty-one fifty to 55 so I can make $3.50. So that's not bad. And I'm already, I know where I'm going with this because I already know I'm making money on the one. And then this one, I can only make $1.50. So in my mind, the better one is going to be A, because the break even's lower, so I have an easier way to make money, and I'm making more money. Because if it goes to 54, here I make 250, here I make 50 cents. If it goes to 55, I make make 350, and here I make 150. So it's got to be A is as an Alcatraz. Boom, On, onward and upward. Okay, here we go. Ooh, let's let's put a little space in here so you can find it. Everyone, while I'm doing this, press pause. And try to read this thing and find out what they're asking. Okay. Here we go. Pause. Oh, I gotta, I'm back. Okay. Now, in October, a customer wants to write calls, obligation, for a maximum of six months against his 5,000 share position in ABC to generate income. Right. Because the only reason we sell calls is for income, so we're good. The customer wants to avoid tax liability in the current year. So he does not want to pay tax liability in this year. Okay. Which of the following option strategies would maximize the customer's income? So it's either an American style expire in April, out of the money, American style expire in January, in the money, European style expiration, out of the money, Europe and December expiration, European style expiration in April, in the money. Okay. So you got to look through this and go, what does this person want? Well, he's looking for income, so we're good there. We're selling calls. We're good. Now, he does not want to avoid, he wants to avoid tax liability in the current year. So then we can definitely say we throw that out. Because if this expires in December, we are absolutely getting exercise. And that's where we realize the gain in the current year. So we don't want that. So boom, we're out. And remember, what's the difference? An American style, love American style. That means free babe, free baby America. You can exercise anytime you want. The owner or the owner, not the seller, the owner of the option can exercise anytime they want. So American style, that's it. European style, you can only exercise at expiration or within the week. So that may factor into some stuff since we're here and that's what's different. So we're going through this. American style, I mean, in reality, they could exercise in December, correct? So maybe we're going to throw that out because they could exercise this on December and we get a gain. Well, both American styles, even though it expires in January, they could exercise anytime they want. So I'm going to throw that one out too. So actually, again, it's kind of easy once you break it down. So this is not always how I do it, but this is the best way. Now, why is, why is this the best answer? I know we had the answer because we eliminated the other shit, but let's find out why. So European style means you can't exercise until April, which means as that means the seller of this option is guaranteed to have this option open until April, which is next year. That's the deal here. The European style, we wrote them, we are at the whim of the buyer. So A and B, the guy, the person who owns the guy or girl who owns that call could absolutely exercise on my ass, and I will have to pay taxes in the current year. European style, I wouldn't have to wait till expiration, but it expires in December. So I will have to 
realize it this year because that's when it's going to expire. So the only one that works is European South because it doesn't expire until April and they cannot exercise it until April. So that's the problem. That's a good thing for us. They can't exercise until April. I don't want to realize my gain until next year. So that's the only answer. A boom, baby, boom. Okay, so I'm in a good mood. So I thought this was a good one. This is a nice margin question. Combined margin. Yes, there is a way to do that stupid formula. Long value plus credit minus debit, debit balance minus short market value. I don't like doing that because if they ask crazy questions, you're stuck. So I like to do, we're going to do a crazy question. Press Poserino. Okay, welcome back. Uh, try to do it yourself and see if we match up answers. So now the first thing you want to do is I do them separately. That's all I do. It takes a little bit longer sometimes, but you'll never get it wrong. So I do that. So I set up my Mr. Desby, right? Boom, I set up my uh, Mr. Desby and Russian children must eat snow. So let's start with it. So first market value, my long market value is going to be 80K. Then my debit balance is going to be 34K. I'm going to set them all up. I'll do one at a time. Don't do a bunch of shit at the same time. Stay in the moment. My credit balance here is 10K. Good thing I'm not super short because that's just some risky as shit. And then my market value here, my short market value is going to be SMA. I don't care about right now. We can figure that out at some other time. So now, and guys, you didn't catch what I did. I made a mistake, right? We got to put this in here. So my short market value is 6K. Okay, so let's do the math. It's super easy. Start on the long side. 80 minus 34. 80 minus 34. Use the handy dandy calculator. Do not do shit in your head ever. 80K minus 34K is 46,000. So my equity is 46,000. Then I go to the other side. So it's remember, it's market minus debit on the long. And on the short side, it's credit minus market, 10 minus six. Yes, I could do it in my head, but I'm not going to just to be a good example to the kiddies. 10 grand minus six grand is four grand. So my equity on the long side is 46. The X one on the short side is, is uh, on the short side is four grand. I got 46,000 plus four grand is a grand total of 50 grand. So that's an easy margin question. Not too shabby. Oh, it's white because I was doing that. You can't really see white. So the answer is B here. That's all it is. So when I do margin and it's a combined account, I don't do the long plus credit. We could even try that, right? So let's try if it works. So we can do long 80,000 plus credit 80 plus 10, right? Long plus credit, right? 80. See, I don't even know the formula because I don't care about it. Plus credit of 10. Equals 90,000 minus 34,000 minus 6,000. And it works out to be 50 grand too. Kind of works out. So in this case, let's let's forget the SMA on the long side. So since we're here, 80 minus, so equity is 46 grand. Reg T is 40, right? T is 40K. So my, equity, my SMA over here is going to be 6K. Wunderbar. I love it. That's awesome. That's not an answer. I just a little bonus on top of that. You had to deal with my stupid shit. Okay. Listen, that's good. Listen, I hope that helps a little bit. Well, thank you very much for suffering through all that. I hope it helps. I hope it gives you an idea of how to process questions a little bit better. And don't forget to meet me every Tuesday and Thursday night on the tube of you, 8.30 p.m. Eastern. I do a live Q&A for every finner exam. You just come on and we do it. Sometimes you have special guests. Sometimes you don't. Mostly it's just you have to listen to my chaotic rants. Everyone, I will see you on the other side.